if I see a Windows source code leak, I would expect to see some really hacky systems programming. But it turns out that Linux is no stranger to weird and wacky code, as was recently demonstrated by this patch from Jason A. Donenfield. This reverts DRM Atomic Take the Atomic Toys Away From X, a rootkit-like kludge that has no business being inside of a general purpose kernel. It's the type of debugging hack I'll use momentarily but never commit, or a sort of baby's first process hider malware trick. Now, Atomic in this context basically means a command, a function, an API call, whatever you want to call it, that cannot be broken down into its subsequent parts. Either everything happens or none of it happens. Normally, you might interleave different processes and sometimes certain parts of it won't be done, but with something Atomic, everything just has to happen. This makes doing things like asynchronous code a lot easier. You don't have to worry about race conditions or anything else like that. Now this whole first paragraph sounds really, really bad, but it is quite exaggerated how big the issue actually is. The part that's not exaggerated is this being a kludge that has no business inside a general purpose kernel. Because what is being done here is an API behavior is being disabled based on a single letter in a process name. Now, you might know this, maybe you don't, but the alphabet isn't made up of unique identifiers. Letters are used multiple times. So the original patch in question is this one from Daniel Vetter of Intel all the way back in 2019. Now the original patch wasn't exactly written the way that it should be written, so it got rewritten by Greg Carl Hartman and ultimately did get merged in and this patch is going to revert it. So the backstory here is that some user space code, that being Xorg server, has a mode setting DDX. Mode setting basically being controlling the settings of your monitor, like your resolution, the refresh rate, and things like that. And DDX standing for device dependent X driver. And this isn't really coded right. And by not coded right, it means things like this. In Ubuntu 1904, the screen display incompleted when rotating the screen left to right. So like doing a horizontal to vertical rotate, things like that. Also, regression bisected black screen with cursor. Basically trying to do these monitor operations wasn't exactly working through this function. But it wasn't a problem on every hardware configuration. Some of the configurations played perfectly fine with this atomic mode setting, and no issues were reported whatsoever. But the main problem is Wayland exists, and nobody wants to maintain X11 anymore. So rather than fixing the buggy code, the kernel was adjusted to avoid having to touch X11. A bummer, but fair enough. If the kernel doesn't want to support some user space API anymore, the right thing to do is to arrange for a graceful fallback where user space thinks it's not available in a manageable way. Now, I know Linux has this general mindset of never break user space, but never break user space doesn't mean never change. And this is something Linus himself has said. Never break user space means don't break things that people actually rely on. And in this case, because basically the only thing used in this API didn't work in the first place, making it not work didn't really have an effect on that. The much funnier issue is the way they handled their graceful fallback and got rid of the API. What they did is check if the first letter of the process starts with a capital X and disable it only for that case. So that means it's not simply a matter of the kernel not wanting to support a particular user space API anymore, but rather it's the kernel not wanting to support Xorg server in theory, but actually it turns out it's all processes that begin with X. So this is the revert, the new patch in question. Basically all it's doing is removing these five lines. Now in these five lines it's checking if the process starts with the letter X and if it's using the atomic mode set. If it is using it, it will then run the PR info function with the message broken atomic mode set user space detected, disabling atomic. 
and then returns dash eop not supported. Now, according to error number, what this is going to mean is this right here. Operation not supported on socket. E not sup and eop not sup have the same value on Linux, but according to POSIX1, these error values should be distinct. In layman's terms, it's saying that doesn't work. I don't know what you want me to do. But from here, it gets even dumber. So because the atomic driver didn't work properly in Xorg anyway, disable atomic support by default. The atomic driver has issues with mode setting when stealing connectors from a different CRTC, a black stream and doing a rotation on a different CRTC, and in general, is just mapping of the legacy helpers to atomic. This is already done in the kernel, so just fall back to legacy by default until this is fixed. Please backport to 1.20 as we don't want to enable it for everyone there. It breaks for existing users. The fixes to make X server more atomic have been pending on the mailing list for ages. So the patch in the kernel to stop this functioning is now stopping something function that isn't enabled by default. So it's not stopping anything except in weird cases like this. So at least on IRC, Ali D, which is Dave Ali, said given how broken the mode setting atomic code is, we might be able to accelerate this a bit as in breaking stuff in the kernel, but yeah, the fallback is that we simply don't advertise atomic in the kernel if it's from a process that's called Xorg, with perhaps some override option. So instead of just not disabling it based on the first letter, now if you want to use it, you're considering changing the name of the process calling it so that you don't get in the way of this code that was intentionally put in there to cause the issue. Also, in case you've got the name of the guy who made the original patch, Daniel Vedder, it's the same guy. <laughs> The same guy who's saying, hey, maybe we have a workaround is the same guy who brought in the patch that forced there to be a workaround. I don't understand. And judging by what the guy said in the new patch, I don't think they ever actually made the workaround. So the user space is mostly fine now for ordinary default usage. And people who opt into this, since it does actually work fine for many use cases on i915, ostensibly know what they're getting themselves into. If you're modifying really weird X settings like this, I imagine you have some level of understanding of what is going on in X. And if you want to go and use it, you can't because it's disabled at the kernel level. However, while this is a hack and is probably not the way this should have ever been done, a lot of people talking about this are making it seem like a way bigger deal than it actually is. Especially the tweet that many people find out about this and the one that got shared over on Reddit. So apparently if your process name starts with the letter X, Linux's DRM subsystem will change its API behavior. Something having to do with hacking the kernel rather than fixing X11. Yowza. That makes it sound really bad. Like, if you do this, it's some, like, exploit that can take over the kernel. That's not at all what is being done. All that is being done is if the process starts with the letter X and is trying to use this atomic mode set, then it will not function. And the reason this isn't that big of a deal and the way... It and the reason you didn't hear about it three years ago back when this originally got merged is because the only thing doing that is Xorg. And it didn't work in Xorg, so no one was using it. It doesn't matter that other applications like X Screen Saver or XCOM2 or, I don't know, other applications that start with X also start with X. They're not using this function anyway, so it is not going to affect them. But that is not going to stop the post exploding on r slash Linux. And no matter how many people in this thread are like me and saying, hey, this isn't really that big of a deal, and even though they do get heavily upvoted, a lot of people are like, wait, but if it's named, if I name a program X, that means it's going to break. No, this has been in the kernel for three years. It's not going to just break. It's not how this works. Linux has been usable since 2019. Why? Why? <laughs> What is going on? I don't understand! But the internet will be the internet. So let me know if you've run into any hacky code in your development or Linux career, whatever you want to call it. 
Is it any of your code? Is it code that somebody else has wrote? Is it code you've been paid to write? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starring Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And it's really hot in here.